Let's look at the capital asset pricing model. The framework for pricing assets based on return and volatility. So what we're going to draw here is a line that starts at the risk-free rate. The risk-free rate has a positive return, as you can see on the vertical axis. And on the horizontal axis, it intersects the vertical, so it has no risk. So what you'll see here is that the risk-free rate, the point at which it touches the vertical axis, is its positive return with its risk of zero. So we can then look beyond that and draw a line at the level of risk where the market is. And this is where a company would have a beta of 1, the market level of risk. And as you can see, this line slopes, the orange line slopes up and to the right, which indicates that as return increases, so does risk. And then we can measure the equity risk premium, which is the additional amount required by investors for the risk that they're taking. It's typically between 3 and 9%, but it varies by country and by market. Let's look at some specific data points as examples. So as I mentioned, starting at this point, we have no risk and a small positive rate of return. Then as we stay on the line and we increase our risk to the level of the market, we now earn a higher rate of return. And that incremental rate of return, as measured on the vertical axis, is typically between 3 and 9%. We could then go further along the line to this data point, where we have what might be a beta of 2, so twice as volatile as the market. And then we can see the corresponding rate of return on the vertical axis, which is higher than the rate of return was for a stock with the same beta as the market, which was that middle data point. Now let's go off the line a bit and explore what happens elsewhere on this graph. So at this data point, a company has a more attractive return versus risk profile than others because it's above the line, meaning it gets a higher rate of return but with less volatility than is expected by this model. Conversely, a data point down here is the opposite. It's experiencing more risk, more volatility of return, but producing less overall return than is expected by investors. So it's important to think about how you can achieve high rates of return with lower risk where possible and what that means for the pricing of assets.